Oh, on that note, a little <laughs> side thing when you segue on that. Uh, I I have a little bit of an interest in economy, which is a natural part of the quadrivium, which we will get to later. Um, because it's actually in the original classical education economy. Anyway, well, as in numbers in themselves or numbers in relation to good services? No, no in, in, um, in everyday life part of uh, the classical education. Well, my, my point is that there's a, there's a term in, in finance, which is um, in, um, in investment uh, uh, stuff uh, when you are trading uh, shares. Um, mm -hmm. trying to beat the game in the casino gulag thingy. <laughs> well, anyways, um, they have a term where when you look at daily averages, mm -hmm. how prices are moving, then the daily averages will span a box. And this type of box is called a Donkian channel because it expands and it narrows uh, depending on trading. Right, so mm -hmm. it creates kind of like weird steps and uh, shapes. The article about this phenomenon in 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 finance and in, in economics was actually printed in an in an early edition of Playboy magazine. It's just that really? it's just that when you have discussions with people in finance, it's just one of those funny stories that. You don't know where gold is going to be found. You cannot say. It can, right. it can, it can be in the most obscure places that you never knew you could find it in. True. Which brings me to the whole everyday thing um, about um, about props and 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 about items in reality that that relates to these things. Uh, I mentioned traffic and and signs and symbols and how uh, they are shaped, what they mean and and uh, learning things about color. Um, all these things have uh, have meaning and convey information. And this is also part of uh, the method of it's it's a more subtle part of rhetoric, really. Um, I mean, the, the point the point of all this being, it, it, I mean, if it so sounds arcane, if you don't know what we're on about, I mean, fair enough. I didn't until not so long ago, and it, it's if you don't know, it can be used to control you, and lo and behold, it is. Yes, and and what's so tragical is that it's actually something that's been taken out of education. It used to be free. There was a revolution before this one, um, right? This one is mm -hmm. called information wants to be free, and we've had that more than once. Yeah, we had definitely. that in, uh, in 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 classical ancient Greece, and there's a lot of nice documentaries about this. If people can get out of the way of always thinking that people in the old days were more primitive, and kind of put themselves in a in a state of disbelief, let's say we didn't have computers or cars and stuff. Let's say you lived in Greece at that time, and let's say that all these people <laughs> had the same brain capacity that we do. Mm -hmm. Then the stories and the narratives and, and, and the whole experience of these things would just make so much more sense. And then it, it was a revolution in information technology. It was a democratic and liberal revolution that happened in Greece. For good reason. But that's a long story and I really think that people should uh, take a look for themselves. There's really some good documentaries out there. Let me just... Um, but, but I mean... Uh, let me just mention uh, this, this thing called the MV Group. And then people can go and search the internet. Use your Google. Got to only do that. I mean, I think I think you need to call a Google bomb actually for people to to actually do that rather than just listen because the next guy's always you know jamming his bit in there. But uh, as you mentioned, I mean, there's been plenty of <clears throat> what you can call information revolutions. This what we're in right now is not one though, not, not according to my one. This is information overload, complete and utter. My favorite Frank Miller quote. Um, well, Lex Luthor, anyway. Frank Miller is the author. Um, freedom of speech is a wonderful thing, as long as nobody's listening. Um, yeah, but uh, I, 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 I don't agree with you on, on that. It's, it's a dystopian point of view. What we are seeing now, of course, there's shock effect. That's natural when you get something like this. Um, this is a, a new renaissance. And this is also why you see 
things like the classics being um, rediscovered, really, because we will get new Renaissance men in the traditional sense, people that are knowledgeable in, in so many fields and people are going to be amazed at how many laymen are going to crawl up from the underground saying, well, I know a lot about this. I know a lot about psychology, but where did you study? At home. 